Hi guys. So in this exercise, we're preparing a business card design, including the bleed, for print in Affinity Designer version 2 for the iPad. Now I'm not designing um, the logo, etc. on this card. I'm designing the card so that you've got a foundation to work with. In today's tutorial, we'll look at the process of designing a business card and highlight some important considerations when designing for print using the iPad. It's super important that you get things like bleed, colour mode and resolution right when you're creating your artwork. Otherwise you might end up having your files rejected by the printer or having to start again from scratch or even worse, receiving hundreds of prints back that look nothing like your design. Business cards are a common printed product that are fairly simple to design, but before you start, make sure you receive specific artwork instructions from the print house you're going to use. Every company has their own preferences, so the settings used in this tutorial might not match up exactly with what your printer wants, so always ask but at least you'll know what they're referring to when they say things like trim size and bleed size. So, to create a master, use the business card preset. It's already in your system. Swap the dimensions, in this case, so your card is in landscape mode. So you can see you've got 55 by 88, whereas default, it defaults to 88 by 55, which is portrait mode. So just swap those two around and you'll have a landscape business card. You could even create that as a preset, which is always there when you need it. We're designing for print to go to a print house. So select the CMYK color mode. So we're working in cyan, magenta, yellow and black inks as opposed to RGB light inks. Remember this because you eventually need another just like it for the other side of the card. And we're going to take a shortcut for this one. And you'll see that as we get there. Using the business card preset, select margins and bleed tab. Set the bleed to 3mm, set the margins to 5mm. This creates your safe area. So let's explore these further. So your card is 55 by 88 millimeters and you have a 5mm margin, that's the boundary inside the card, and the bleed is 3mm on all sides. With your new document created, the bleed and margins are clearly defined now, and you can see them there, the blue outer line. That is not, you can't actually put anything in there. That'll be cut off by the printer, but that's okay. You'll see a border appear around your created document, 3 millimeters outside the design size. That's the bleed. Bleed is basically some padding around the edge of the design which is cut off during the printing process. And this is quite important with a business card. It ensures that you don't end up with teeny slithers of white paper along the edge of your prints if the machine isn't lined up exactly. Nothing worse. With your bleed created, we need to understand how you can actually see the bleed area outside the trim area. Recall the trim is the finished cut size of your document once it has been trimmed. 88 millimeters by 55 millimeters. The bleed allows you to draw graphics or colors right outside the visible so it can be trimmed off and not leave those little visible borders around your document. So your document is the purple, that's where you'll have everything, and the bleed is actually cut off. With your bleed created, drag out a coloured rectangle the full size of the bleed area. 88 by 55 plus bleed equals 88 plus 6. That's 3 top and 3 bottom, 3 left and 3 right by 55 plus 6, or 94 by 61. You will not see the yellow rectangle in the bleed area. Select Document Tool, then Canvas, then Clip to Canvas. 
this will reveal the entire canvas. And you can see there, you've got the margins, the edge of the document, and the bleed. So the yellow goes right out to the edge. Your full-size document will now show out to the bleed. The original document outline can already be seen below the yellow, but we need something more definite. So next, place another rectangle, white is good, that's the actual size of the card, 88 by 55. Now you can clearly see your bleed area. That's the part that will be trimmed off, leaving a nice clean edge. Graphics and text must not enter this bleed area, because it will be cut off, quite simply. You need the bleed, especially when applying graphics, even just plain coloured backgrounds. There's nothing worse than seeing horrible plain paper slivers showing around the borders because they weren't trimmed cleanly. You don't want a thousand cards like this delivered. It's also wise to highlight a safe area within your document. This not only makes sure your important elements like a name or logo aren't too close to the trim area, that they risk being chopped off. It also helps balance your design by applying some margin around the edge. The size of the safe zone is entirely up to you, but 5mm shifts your elements inwards enough to look neat. Your margins show at 5mm in on all sides. This is your safe area. So inside that blue rectangle is your safe area, not too close to the edge, and your document looks balanced. I want a black background for my card design, so I'll tap the Move tool and select the shape that covers the entire bleed area. A black background sounds simple enough, but there's a whole plethora of different black colours that can be printed. If you move the colour picker to black in the colour picker interface, you'll notice it's made up of 000 in the RGB panel, which means there's no light, so it's as dark as you can get. But look over at the CMYK values, and they're all over the place. There's the option of a basic 100% K black, which uses just the black ink from the standard CMYK process colours. This is a good choice for text, because just using one ink out of the four CMYK colours means you'll get the sharpest possible print. But when it's applied to a large area, it can look a little washed out. Notice, of course, I still have the white overlay rectangle in place. Rich black is the term used for mixes of cyan, however you pronounce that, magenta, yellow and black that result in a deeper black print. A common combination is 50, 40, 40, 100, which refers to the percentages of the four CMYK colours you set in your software and the amount of ink printed with each colour. The trouble is, this particular colour mix uses all four colours so it has a high risk of causing fuzzy text as the artwork is printed four times one on top of the other. This becomes particularly prominent if any of the print heads or plates are misaligned, known as misregistration in print terms. A couple more common black options are warm black and cool black, which mix 100% K with 50% cayenne or magenta, these two recipes use only two colours, so it's much safer to use with detailed artwork while still darkening the plaque print. The difference between them, as their names suggest, is one has more of a cooler blue tone, whereas the other has a warmer browny red tone. I'm going to use blue elsewhere in my design, so I'll go with cool black to complement it. That's the cyan edition, 50% cayenne and 100% K. Set up the colour manually by entering the relevant percentages in the CMYK values. You can see there, that's what I've done. So here I have the white rectangle, the actual card size, turned off. We don't need it. You can see the bleed, the guides for the safe zone and the overall cool black all set. 
Now, you may not immediately notice that, but if you look at it closely, within the square of the safe area, that black is a slightly, slightly bluer colour than the black of the main document border outside the workspace of Affinity Designer. The black is controlled by the CMYK and is understood by the commercial printing houses. It's a slightly cooler black. You can now begin building your business card design by bringing in a logo. Now I'm not going into logo design here, but I've simply used a, uh, an SVG file here, scale it to size and align it to the safe zone guides. That's the inner guide you can see there, the blue rectangle. There's no white ink in printing, unless it's a super specialist print, and we're not concerned about that here. Giving something a white fill in your software will translate to the other elements being knocked out to allow the white paper stock to show through. Copy and paste your SVG logo, then select both layers. Now you can see I've got them both selected there. With both layers selected, go to the Edit Tools, select Subtract from the Geometry list, and the result of the geometry exercise is there. The logo is cut out cleanly, exposing the white card stock in the background. You can see in the Layers panel that I have unselected the white rectangle. We actually don't need it now, so it can probably even be deleted. But I've left it there as a bit of a guide for me, so I don't, um, I don't forget about it. When entering the text for your print design, six point is usually the lowest you'll want to go. A business card is held up close normally to your face, so you can get away with generally smaller type. But be careful if you're using elegant fonts with high contrast. There's a point where fine lines become unprintable. The syncopate font I'm using is pretty robust, so it can handle six points, as shown here. I'm using a second layer for the reverse side. You can leave the card white and use the black for text if you like. But you can see I've as good as finished the front side, I'm now moving to the back of the card, the reverse side. In my design, I'm enclosing the main name and contact info in a white box, which needs extending up to the bleed area. And you can see it's not quite there yet. One thing to keep in mind when designing for print is the paper stock forms a large part of the final design, which you don't get to see on screen. A lot of people try to add gradients and drop down shadows to make their designs more interesting, but these often just muddy the final print. An area of flat colour might look boring on screen, but when it's printed, you'll see the texture of the paper with a matte or glossy finish. I want to have the logo and a tagline on this side of the card, so I'll paste in the logo graphic and type out the text with the relevant font. Usually it's advised to add all your text because it's made in crisp vectors rather than fuzzy pixels when you convert the text to curves. Now that's important. Your printer may not have the font you use, so convert it to curves. Then you can transport it anyway. Now I'm going into card design, but setting up the card, so I'll stop here. Your design will be absolutely different. Now there's the finished card, the two sides. Synergy Systems, the front, just Synergy Systems, side one if you like, and side two, the details. Um, the person's name, address, how to contact them, and you can see the white cutout goes right up to the edge, the bleed line. It's been cut off at the bleed, which is just what you want. And that's obviously the reverse of the card because the outline is not as heavy the logo, but it's still there. It's almost like a shadow of the front side of the card. So there's a little bit of design there. Now that's where I'm going to stop for this exercise and I hope it's enough to show you that you can set up that bleed, guides, margins and colours as you like. So thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, click on the thumbs up for a like, and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it when you do.